What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Inside the Vinyl. I'm your host, Tim Bianconi. If you would, go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel below. That would be appreciated. If you could also hit that notification bell so you could be notified anytime we put out new content, that would be appreciated also. Uh, so I'm going to dip back into my Lost Classic series and talk about a Lost Classic and a very underappreciated album uh, from a uh, hair metal era band, and that would be Britney Fox. So this is their debut record. Uh, it was released uh, on June 10th, 1988, uh, recorded between 1987 and 1988, uh, produced by John Jansen, uh, who, would also, uh, who is also known for producing some Cinderella uh, albums. Uh, it reached as high as number 39 on the Billboard charts and has been certified gold. So, you know, again, sometimes it's kind of hard to think of a lost classic in terms of an album that's either certified gold or platinum. However, you know, I, I don't think this album really gets the appreciation it deserves. Uh, I know the cover could be a little off-putting for some uh, who aren't really into the glam era, but this band, to me, was a lot more than what this cover implies. So uh, the band included uh, Dizzy Dean Davidson, Michael Kelly Smith, Billy Childs, and Johnny D. And actually, if I'm not mistaken, this band is actually an offshoot of Cinderella. A couple of guys in this band were original members of the band Cinderella before Cinderella got signed and all. So, uh, and it's also very interesting that it's an offshoot of Cinderella, yet shares some style and sound, you know, with Cinderella, including a singer who is very reminiscent of uh, Cinderella singer Tom Kiefer in uh, in Dizzy Dean here. So, uh, so let's go. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this record. So again, here's the front cover in all their glam metal glory. All right. And here is the back cover uh, that doesn't do a whole lot for detractors of hair metal because uh, everything about this cover says cheesy glam rock. Uh, you know, and you know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, a lot of these bands, I don't know that a lot of these bands necessarily wanted to look this way. Uh, some of this has to do with record, uh, record label influence, um, you know, because this is a little over the top even for the times. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have inside here. All right. All right. So if we open up the record, nothing too special here. Just a lyric sheet on one side. And then, of course, all the liner notes and special thanks and everything on the other side. Uh, pretty basic vinyl here uh, with your standard uh, issue red Columbia sticker in the middle for side one and side two. You know, again, nothing too special there. Nothing too flashy. Uh, you know, this was getting toward this album was released, you know, toward the end of, uh, you know, of, of vinyl. I don't know if you want to call it dominance because I don't know if it was dominating at that time. But let's just say, okay, it was released, you know, during vinyl's decline. Um, so this is actually pretty hard to find. Uh, I, I spent a pretty penny on this on eBay to get a copy of this record. Um, you know, but there's nothing too flashy about it. Um, you know, at least the way it was released at the time. So uh, the reviews from what I've read are fairly favorable. Uh, album is always, this album is always listed on... Uh, you know, Rolling Stone or VH1 or whoever's list of best hair metal albums. So, I mean, it's pretty highly regarded in that community, but I don't know how far it reaches outside of it. Uh, but the singles, uh, the first single, which was the song that made me fall in love with this band, was a song called Long Way to Love. Uh, just the guitar riff alone on that, I could just listen to that on loop all day long, but it's a great song. Uh, the second single uh, is a song called Girl School, which incidentally... Not only the name of the band, but also the video for Girls' School uh, was later used as the inspiration for Britney Spears' Baby One More Time video. So a little bit of trivia there for you. Uh, you know, so in some ways, maybe this band did reach outside of the hair metal realm a, a little bit. But, uh, you know, they're called Britney Fox. They made a, a video about girls in a Catholic school or whatever. And, you know, pretty reminiscent of what Britney Spears would do later on. Um, other highlights, uh, Kick and Fight, great song. Fun in Texas, another great song. Uh, they do a Slade cover uh, called Goodbye to Jane. Um, I don't know if they were trying to, uh, you know, do something kind of like Quiet Riot where they have a couple hits from Slade covers, but, you know, again, there it is. And, of course, uh, uh, second to last tune on the record, In America, is another highlight. So, again, cover of the album is misleading. This album rocks a lot harder than the front cover or even the back cover would tell you. Um, you know, and the videos, if you watch them, they're even cheesier than the album cover. So... They didn't do themselves any favors image-wise, but the music, I, I promise you, the music is much, much better than what the cover of the album would imply. Um, unfortunately, this was the most success the band would ever have uh, in this first gold record. Uh, Boys in Heat, their second record came out in 89. Great record. 
uh, but didn't do much chart wise. Uh, even you know, um, and then uh, Dizzy Dean left after uh, soon after, and they released another album in '91 called Bite Down Hard with a new singer. Uh, that album didn't even chart. So you know, unfortunately, this was the peak of their success, which is kind of why this is a lost classic to me because I kind of feel like this band outside of the realm of hair metal pretty much got swept under the rug and um it's not necessarily deserved because this is a great rock record so that's all i've got for you this time like comment share and subscribe to my channel below hit that notification bell so you can be notified when we put out new content uh i've got the rest of my inside the vinyl series where we talk about other lost classics live albums uh we also like to unbox a lot of things on here um, I've got uh, some live footage from various festivals and concerts over the last several years. And I've got some disc golf coverage starring some very mediocre players, myself included. So like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace out. <laughs> there you go, boy.